Good morning. Hey, this is Matt, and I'm out on this glorious Colorado morning, uh, just listening to Catechism in a Year with Father Mike Smith. And he's talking about the Eucharist uh, today. And man, he made some wonderful, awesome points. Um, just summarizing what the Catechism says about the sacrament. But something he said really jumped out at me. And I don't know that we think about it too often. And I certainly don't. It's something a little bit new to me. But he's talking about the parallels between the Exodus, story of Exodus, uh, the Jews coming out of Egypt, and the Eucharist that we receive in the Catholic Mass, which we believe truly is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And we're a little bit unique in that. I mean, the Orthodox Church has that, but other Christian denominations um, do not have that because they do not have the succession of the apostles um, who were given the power, you know, to basically speak on behalf of Jesus and perform the transubstantiation of the bread and the wine. But the parallel was striking. I mean, it just kind of brings it all together. So what did you think about what did God ask the Jews to do when they were leaving Pharaoh? So they had to bring in a one-year-old spotless perfect lamb. They had to live with it in their house for a week. And then they took that lamb, they slaughtered it, they cooked the meat and ate the meat of that lamb, and they spread the blood over their door mantle to signify that they are God's chosen people. And out of obedience, that's what they did. And you think about what we do in the Mass, well, back that up, think about what, what Jesus did first, because that's what we celebrate at every Mass, the sacrifice of Jesus, and we relive it with the memorial at every Mass. So, Jesus went into Jerusalem, basically the home of the Jewish faith, lived there for a week, preached, sat in synagogue, answered questions. Pontius Pilate declared him faultless. He said, I see no fault in this man. He was then sacrificed on the cross and what did he ask us to do eat his flesh drink his blood on the cross his blood no doubt dripped down and covered his apostles who were bringing him down from the cross and burying him preparing him for burial and so you see this parallel and, and what does Jesus say in I think it's the Gospel of John. I am the Lamb of God. I am the perfect Lamb. And you know, he goes on in the Gospels to say, uh, unless you eat this, my, my body and drink my blood, you have no life within you. So he says it himself, that he is the Lamb, that we have to eat his body, drink his blood. We have to be marked with his blood and then it got me thinking also, like, okay, when are we marked with his blood? Like, okay, well, Jesus at the um, wedding feast in, in the Gospels at Cana turned water into wine. And then the wine is what he says is his blood. And in the sacraments of baptism, we are marked with water. The sign of the cross is put on their heads. Uh, we're dunked in the water three times or poured water on their head three times. So we are, in a way, marked with the water. The, the water, I don't know, Jesus was also baptized in the water, and the water didn't make him holy. He made the water holy 
and we are blessed with that holy water same water kind of water that God created that Jesus turned into wine at which the Last Supper he said is his blood so it just these parallels it kind of brings it all together for me and then in the mass we relive that same way the Jews in their memorialization relive the past to Exodus during Passover and you know at the at the feast that they host doing the prayers and eating the food and singing the songs and everything that's what we're doing in the mass as well it's not like we're you know the same way the Jews do not <laughs> leave their house and go into the desert for 40 days to celebrate Passover um, we also do not physically kill Jesus again at every Mass, but we do kind of travel back in time, if you will, and relive that sacrifice, and it's the same. It's just, the parallels are amazing. And it just reinforces what Jesus said. We are called to believe that the Eucharist is truly his body and his blood. And so it's just something to think about next time you're at Mass. You know, treat it like it's your first time. Treat it like it's your only time. Treat it like it's your last time. Make it special. Do what you have to do. For me, when the priest lifts up the Eucharist and says, this is my body or this is my blood, um, I always echo the words of St. Thomas, the Apostle, my Lord and my God, because it is just... Mm, astounding to think about it in that moment and then when I receive it I'm just you know even when I'm walking up I'm preparing myself you know, I say the words Lord I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof again Jesus coming into our homes into our bodies our temple um, but only say the word and I shall be worthy and it's just you know amazing that he can make my soul worthy to receive him. Otherwise, I would probably just die, you know, keel over and die in front of him if I didn't believe that he had the power to to make me worthy to receive him. I'd be too intimidated, right? If I saw Jesus standing in front of me, maybe to even approach him. But he does veil himself. He hides himself so that we don't have to hide. We can be ourselves. We can approach him with a perfect heart and ask for his mercy and ask him to change us through that intimacy of actually bringing him into our bodies. And then the particles, you know, they become one with us. They flow through our blood and infuse themselves into ourselves. So it's just, you can't be more intimate than that. <laughs> I mean, like Christians say, I want a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, we want more, we want intimacy with Jesus. The most intimate way we can be with Jesus, that's what we want. And I think that's enviable. And I think that's something that's unique and wonderful about being Catholic. So I hope um, this message drives something home for you, helps you understand at least why we think the Eucharist is so special and maybe it'll change how you approach Jesus next time you go to Mass. Peace be with you. God bless. Amen.